Okay, welcome. Tracy, do you want to start us off? That sounds great. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar on options for online office hours. We're going to be covering six tools and ideas for hosting online office hours. If you have any questions, um, please post your questions in the Q&A window. You'll see that window. There's a spot for you to post your questions in the Q&A window, and we'll just quest address questions at the end of the conference uh, call. Also, we are recording this webinar, so if you're having any technical difficulties, um, we will be sending a recording of this webinar out after the um, webinar today. So today we have um, three of us on the panel today, myself, Tracy Miller Nobles um, from Austin Community College. We have Wendy Teets from Kent State University, and we also have Jennifer Canis from University of South Florida. And as I shared, our goal today is to discuss six tools and ideas for you to utilize during your online office hours. You can get a copy of the slides from today's webinar at the address that's listed on your screen. We will send this address out to you in the email after the webinar today. The address is um, case sensitive and you'll have to type that address into your browser in order to access it currently. Um, but you should be receiving this address um, in the email that we'll send out today after um, we finish today. So let's go ahead and get started. I think I'm passing it over to Wendy. Great, thank you, Tracy. So again, I'll be sending out the recording and the slides. That may happen tonight, it may happen tomorrow morning, but it will be soon. Feel free to share those with any colleagues. So um, first tool we're gonna talk about is Zoom. And this is kind of neat because Zoom is what we're using right now. Um, so Zoom is a very popular um, platform and we're talking about the free account. So today we're talking about tools that you can use for free and what those features are for the free tool. So um, the features of Zoom is you can have up to 100 participants. So you, can, you don't have to limit yourself to one-to-one. -to -one. You have unlimited time for one-to-one -one meetings. So if a student wants some help, you can jump on, the, on Zoom with the student and there is no time limit. The time limit applies to when you have more than two people on Zoom if you have the free account. So if you have the free account, there is a 40-minute limit. So that kind of limits it in terms of having class with it if you have a free account. Um, it is also something you can record. So if you have a short session, say you have a 15-minute session or a half-hour session, you can use it. And Zoom gives you a personal room link, which is really nice because you can post that personal room link on your LMS and have office hours next to it. Um, so you could set up and tell students that's where you'll be for office hours. Now, the advantages of Zoom, why would you choose Zoom? Well, it's user-friendly to begin with, pretty easy to get started using, um, and students do not need to sign up for anything. Students have a lot of things they have to sign up for. Sometimes they're not so good at confirming emails. This one, you have the account, and then students can just go to your URL, so it makes it pretty simple. The disadvantage is there's no phone option with the free account currently. Um, when they have the phone option sometimes, but right now Zoom is experiencing unprecedented usage, as I'm sure you understand. So there is no call-in option if you have the free account. You have to have a pro account to get the phone option. So students would have to use Wi-Fi. Okay, and this is just a screenshot of Zoom. And when you go into your, your Zoom room, it, your screen's going to look like this. And there's really two pieces of information you need for office hours. You can kind of ignore everything, except you click on personal meeting room, and then there's a join URL in the middle, and it's unique to you, and that's what you copy. So you just tell students, you arrange what time you're going to be in there, you tell them what time you're gonna be in there, and that's all there is to it. There's lots of other options. You can set up meetings, um, you can do different things, but it's just that simple. 
So Zoom for me is really a nice option if you're just looking for something really simple, one-off, students don't need to sign in, and just you've got your room, and that makes it super simple. So nice option there. So that's one option for online office hours. Another option is kind of school specific. Um, this is what I use a lot as well, depending on which class it is. Um, this is Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. And the advantage to this or the features is your school has to purchase it. It's included with the Blackboard LMS, but it also can be added a la carte onto Canvas and other LMSs if your school picks it. The nice thing about um, Collaborate Ultra is you have breakout rooms. So if you're having office hours in Collaborate Ultra and you want to talk to a student privately, you can move yourself and that student into a private breakout room where no one else can see what you're doing. Um, so they can't hear your conversation or anything like that. So that makes that really nice. That's an advantage. And Collaborate Ultra can hold up to 250 participants. If your school has Collaborate Ultra, you can also schedule sessions that would hold up to 500. But for office hours, you're going to be set with just the regular Collaborate Ultra. Now, in terms of advantages and disadvantages, it's integrated with your LMS. So students automatically have it. They can just sign into your LMS, into your course, and as long as you've added it there, students could just access it. So it's really easy. There's no software for students to download. They don't even have to uh, put their name in it. It's going to give you their first and last name just from coming through the LMS. The disadvantage that I see for Collaborate Ultra is it seems like there's a learning curve for some, and I want to say faculty, um, and some students have a little bit of trouble. It's really a super easy setup. It's very simple. Um, and once you see it a couple times, it makes sense. It is rather limited in features. There is a whiteboard, for example, but anybody that has access to the whiteboard can click and either intentionally or accidentally erase it. So that's kind of problem, problematic potentially. Um, and there's, there's not as many snappy things to do with it, but Collaborate Ultra really is a workhorse. If you're interested in how to use Collaborate Ultra, I did do a video last week on Collaborate Ultra, how to set it up for class, but it's the same step for doing office hours. So I would encourage you um, either to email me about that or you can look on my blog. I did post it there and I posted it on LinkedIn as well. Um, so Collaborate Ultra, what it looks like here is the white space. Either you can use the whiteboard or you can share your screen. So I typically share PowerPoint or Excel or whatever I'm using with the student. Student comes for help. I can share my screen and the student can share their screen if you give them that permission. And it's really simple. You have a chat room, you click on that. You have a list of participants, you click on that, um, and it's really that simple. So that's the advantage um, to Collaborate Ultra, that it's a built-in tool you may have already, but if you don't have it, it's not an option. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna turn it over to Jennifer. Thanks, Wendy. So our next option for some online office hours is Microsoft Teams, that some of you may be familiar with. Uh, the features of Microsoft Teams, what it really is, is it's a communication and collaboration tool, a platform. Uh, so you can have chats in there. You can have video meetings if the meeting option is enabled. There's also file storage capabilities. So you can share files back and forth uh, real time and work on different files. So it works really, really well. Actually, Tracy, Wendy, and I use this uh, to collaborate on things all the time. Um, it does integrate with your Office 365 suite, but your school must purchase it and give students access to it. So you would want to check that before you try to set up your online office hours. Your students may or may not have access. Some advantages to Microsoft Teams is it is possibly free for students. They may have it already. Uh, you can set up specific teams for certain classes or certain groups within your classes. Uh, what's nice as a class option is the meetings can hold up to 500 participants if you do have a meetings option within your Microsoft Teams, uh, but obviously you probably wouldn't need to do that for office hours. 
uh, and you can send direct messages to individuals. So the chat function is, is very, very nice. Uh, the disadvantage for Teams is there's definitely, I think, a learning curve. It's not necessarily intuitive when you first start uh, working with it. And you, you would really need to check because your school might not have it available for students. So it may be available for faculty, but not the students. So I know, for example, at University of South Florida, it wasn't currently available for students, but they're working on making that available for students this week. So I'm looking forward to uh, trying that out. So next, we have a screenshot of what Microsoft Teams looks like, just in case you've never used it before. So you can see here's a screenshot of uh, Wendy's screen and you can see all the different messaging. You can see kind of at the top, this is the chat function that you're looking at. So very easy. It's like instant messaging on your computer. So super easy, I think, and intuitive for students to use the chat function. And then you can also see across the top, there's files and organizations and activities. So you can off to the left, create different teams and there's different assignments. You can have a calendar. So lots of different functions you can use in there, but it does take you a little bit of time to kind of explore those options and get up to speed. So next, we're gonna talk about discussion boards. And discussion boards are nice because pretty much all of your LMSs have uh, the availability to set up a discussion board and it's very easy. I know that Wendy, Tracy, and myself have all used these in different capacities and we all use different LMS systems. So uh, a really nice option and very easy, not a tough learning curve uh, to set up a discussion board. Uh, I think one of the, the nice things about the discussion boards is that it does kind of enable you, if you set up a discussion board for your course, uh, and I've done that in the past, but it enables you to kind of uh, funnel questions in one place for students. So I know I normally will set up something called like CPA Cafe or something where students can go in and actually uh, ask her questions in one place and I can answer them so that will kind of cut down on the repetitive emails uh, so I really like that uh, function or that uh, that use of discussion boards um, so we can kind of talk about some advantages and disadvantages to me an advantage of using a discussion board is it's already integrated in your LMS uh, it's definitely easy for students to use they've used them in many other classes uh, so they, they seem very familiar with them. Uh, it definitely makes it easy for you to monitor students and answer their questions when you're not in office hours. So it kind of helps funnel and cut down maybe on the emails where you're constantly an, you know, answering repetitive questions from students. You can ask them to funnel their questions relating to the class in that discussion board. So hopefully that will cut down on your emails. And I would also encourage students to answer each other's questions if they know the answer, because obviously you can't man it 24 seven. Uh, so I think it's a great way to have students actually jump in and help each other. Um, and what's nice about that is answers won't disappear like they possibly would if you have a chat room. Uh, in Blackboard, Collaborate Ultra, or some of the other chat rooms, then once you shut it down, unless you've recorded it, then those uh, answers will disappear. So students can always go back to the discussion board to kind of read through and look for their answers. Uh, disadvantages, clearly if you've used discussion boards before, you know that it, it can, uh, possibly the discussions can kind of veer off topic if students are answering uh, the questions, so you need to be careful of that. Um, students might also not answer the questions correctly, so even though students are answering each other, you really want to make sure you monitor that and kind of jump in politely if someone has answered a question incorrectly because you don't want all of your students kind of using misinformation. And sometimes the lag between posts makes it easy to miss questions, especially if you're getting a lot of questions, which I expect, you know, fortunately USF is on break this week. Um, so I'm not getting a lot of questions yet, but I'm sure as you start transitioning to online teaching, we're gonna start to see more and more questions and a lot of stressed out students, especially I would anticipate the first week or two. So um, you really are gonna wanna make sure you monitor that, or if you have a graduate assistant that can help you monitor those discussion board posts, uh, just to make sure that you don't miss any critical questions or you don't miss uh, a, a student's answer that is completely incorrect and it kind of veers this, the class off into the wrong direction. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Tracy so she can discuss some other options for you.
Thank you, Jennifer. I'm gonna share uh, two options that I use here at ACC. So at ACC, all of our faculty and student emails all run through Google. And so our students and faculty all have access to Google Hangouts. And the great thing about Google Hangouts is that it is a super easy tool to use and you can use it for small group discussions and you can also use it um, for your online office hours. Uh, so Google Hangouts has two different options. When you will go to the previous slide, there are two different options. It can either be a chat conversation or it can be a video call. The chat conversation does get recorded, so we don't have that um, issue that we have that Jennifer referred to previously. Um, and you can open up your chat or you can close down the chat for when you want to be um, contacted by your students and when you don't want to be contacted by your students. And in your email, you can enable the chat to be shown right next to your email. Um, so you can have your email open and then students can contact you directly right through the chat. Um, or there can be a video call and the video call is what they call a hangout. And um, that is in your email, um, at the top of the email screen, next to where your picture is, there are um, nine dots. You'll click those dots and then you'll scroll down to see the area that says Hangouts. And that's what takes you into the area where you can create your first Hangout. If you use Google Calendar, you can also create a scheduled Hangout using Google Calendar. So there's an option to do that there. So now if you're chatting, up to 150 people can be involved in one chat at one time. And it's a little smaller though if you're doing a, a video call. Um, so some of the advantages and disadvantages of Google Hangouts is that it's super easy to use. Um, if you have a Google account, you have access to this. It doesn't cost anything extra, and it's also available for your students on their iPhone or their Android devices, um, so they can really easily be using the Google Hangouts from their iPad, their iPhone, or their Android. The disadvantage, though, is that you have to have a Google account. So if your um, student doesn't have a Google account, then they have to set one up in order to be able to access the Google Hangout. And um, for those of you who teach larger classes, if you're thinking about doing this for uh, virtual lectures, then you need to know that you only need to have up to 50 individuals in the video call. Now, I don't think that'll be a problem for online office hours. I'm lucky to get one student to show up to online office hours. Um, so we should have no problem with Google Hangouts for this. Now, the next tool is GoToMeeting. Um, oh, there's a screenshot that, of what you'll see when you're in the, um, in the Google um, chat area. This is an example of a chat. And you can see up in the right-hand corner where you see um, the video camera, that's what you would click on to then go from a chat situation directly into a video. So if your student is chatting with you and you said, hey, let me show you my screen, then you can just immediately go into a video format and um, you can do that really easily um, from that screen. Okay, so now let's talk about GoToMeeting. GoToMeeting is what I use every semester for my online virtual office hours. Um, so I teach um, a number of courses at ACC online. And so um, when I hold office hours, I hold them in my office, and then I also hold them online. And so my students are actually pretty used to having online office hours already. Um, so what I do is I set up a standard link for the entire semester. And so you can see um, on the screen here that I have a fall office hours link, I have a spring office hours link, and I have a summer office hours link. And then what I do is I post this link in our Blackboard um, Learning Management System. And so the students know that when I have office hours, which is like, um, you know, on Monday from four to six, that they, if they want to join me in, on campus, they could, but if they want to join me online, then they know I'm going to be online. So they just simply click on that link in the Learning Management System, and there I am. I'm just hanging out in my office, hoping someone comes to see me virtually, 
nowadays. Um, so the advantages and disadvantages of GoToMeeting. Um, the advantage is that you can have students share their screen. Um, so if you have a student and they're having problems with one of the homework problems um, and you want to see what they're looking at, you can actually have them share their screen and you can see what they're looking at. Um, this, it does have an app available for iPhone and Android devices, so um, students can easily get access to GoToMeeting um, on any of their devices. Um, and the biggest disadvantage for GoToMeeting used to be the pricing, um, which was you had to pay $12 per month um, to have access for up to 150 individuals at one time, and they did not have a free option available at all. But now, because of the COVID virus, um, many of these um, software providers are providing free um, access for educators, and they now have a three months free um, offering available for GoToMeeting. So you can access GoToMeeting um, for free for your students for up to 150 individuals um, for the next three months for free. So it's a, a really great option for GoToMeeting. So GoToMeeting, what you'll see on the next screen is a picture of um, what GoToMeeting looks like. So you can see that you can have the chats, just like we see in any of the other um, formats. And then if you were to click on that yellow button right there, Meet Now, then that's where you would go into a more um, virtual experience where you could see your students, your students could see you if you decided to um, show your cameras. You could share your screen, all those types of things could be um, completed. So we're gonna pass it over to Wendy. She's gonna wrap it up for us, and then I know we're gonna have some questions and answers. Okay, thank you. So, you know, we're all tossed into this situation. We have to teach online suddenly. I've been fortunate in that I've been teaching online for years, so I don't have a big adjustment. I know Tracy doesn't either, Jennifer's done some too. So we're more fortunate, but what? We're, but the advice we have for you is do the best you can. It's not going to be perfect. I saw this um, illustration on Twitter the other day. And so the semester starts and you, you have these grand plans and then you're to teach in person and then you're told to plan for possible remote teaching. So then you get a little more sketchy you make your remote teaching plan because we were told last Tuesday to make our remote teaching plan by Friday, but then Tuesday afternoon, we were told you're going remote right now. And so the actual teaching is that little six foot. So I think we can think of this as we're all six footing it right now. And we do the best we can and be calm and reach out to people that can help you. I know any of us are willing to help you with any questions you have. Um, so I just wanna point out, Follow our blog for new posts, um, new projects, but also new webinars. We do have a webinar every day this week. We had this one. We have one tomorrow that I think will be pretty cool. It's ideas for online student engagement. I have myself um, in any given semester between 400 and 600 students, and most of them are online. I do teach a synchronous class online, but I have to figure out ways to engage this large class. So I have some ideas. Tracy has the smaller classes and she's gonna talk about how she engages them. And then Jennifer has the really big classes um, and she's going to talk about that. So that's our webinar for tomorrow. And that one's at two o'clock Eastern tomorrow. Then Wednesday, we have one about, if you have to create a video for class, what are some options for doing that? And so that's Wednesday, we're going to be announcing the time later this afternoon. And then Thursday, polling options for online classes. And again, these are all options where we're looking at free tools that you can use that will help your students experience, it'll help your experience. Because let's face it, it's no fun just to listen to videos for hours. And so is there some way that we can get some of that magic that happens in the face-to-face -face classroom back into the online environment. So we're gonna talk about polling options for online classes on Thursday. And then finally, Friday, we're going to be talking about options for writing on your screen. So you want to do a video, but you are so used to in class, writing on the whiteboard, what can we do? How can we replicate that in our online um, classes? 
So those are the online teaching webinars that we have coming up right now. And then I'm going to turn it back over to Jennifer. Thanks, Wendy. So we also want to remind you we had previously scheduled before all this happened uh, a couple of introductory classes, one on Power BI that's also being held on Wednesday, March 18th from three to four. So introducing Power BI into introductory accounting classes. And then next Tuesday on the 24th from three to four, then we also have a tableau for introductory accounting classes. And you can find out more information about all of that and the cases that we've developed thus far at accountingisanalytics.com. So feel free to check those out and sign up for those if you're interested. And then finally, um, to get today's slides, I know Tracy went over this with you, but in case you hopped on late, then uh, you can get today's slides at http uh, backslashes tiny.cc backslash AIA office. And just uh, be aware you can't click on it here. You do need to type it into your browser and it is also case sensitive. Um, and with that, I'll open it up for questions. Thanks a lot. Okay, how about if I read some questions and you two can answer them? Okay. Okay, or we'll all chime in. Okay, so first question I see right here is what solution is best for private conversations about grades? So what do you think? Tracy? So, yeah, so I think that private conversations are best done of the two tools that I talked about. Um, would be Google Hangouts, because with Google Hangouts, you can make sure that you and the student are the only person that's in the Hangout. Um, so you can, you know exactly who's in the Hangout and you can make sure that it's only that student. Um, with GoToMeeting, it's harder because sometimes if a student, um, if they call in, you don't always see that they have come into the meeting. And so you can have other students on the phone and not be aware of that. So my recommendation is um, Google Hangouts. Jennifer? Yeah, I think I would agree with that. I, I talked about discussion boards and teams, and I don't think I'd probably discuss grades over either one of those. You could chat with a student, you could set up a team with a student, but I don't know that you'd want to set up an individual team with a student. So I don't think my options are the best for that. I'd probably, I can defer to Wendy, but I'd say either what yeah. uh, Tracy talked about or some of the tools Wendy uses. For sure. Well, so what I would do, yeah, Collaborate Ultra allows you to have breakout rooms, which are um, private. So that's one very good option. But if your school doesn't have breakout rooms, um, you can use GoToMeeting or what Hangouts, Google Hangouts. And also keep in mind that what I'm doing from the semester, uh, for the rest of the semester, is I'm just telling my students, contact me if they want to meet privately with me or they want to have an office. And then I give them the link for Zoom and it's just them and I at that time. So I'm not posting office hours this, the rest of the term. I'm just saying we'll do it um, on one off. So I make an appointment with a student and we have it. So I guess it would be possible that someone else would join us just by dumb chance. But if you schedule the meeting in Zoom, you don't have anyone else joining you. So I think Zoom is a really good option if um, you want the private conversation. So Google Hangout or Zoom, or if you have Collaborate Ultra, that works too, but I am using Zoom for private office hours this semester. Okay, um, okay, so what's the best method that doesn't include a webcam? Well, you could, I, you could do um, the chat, any of the chat without a webcam, that's no issue. Um, you can also do um, go to meeting and Google Hangouts without a webcam, as long as you have um, some version of a microphone on your computer or laptop. Um, same, same with um, Zoom and Collaborate Ultra. So you don't have to have a webcam. You can go to audio only and that will work fine. Um, also in Collaborate Ultra, you don't have to give audio or video privileges. You can just chat in the chat room. It doesn't, you don't have to have a webcam or a microphone. 
Yeah, you know, I was also just thinking, you know, I know in go to meeting that if you're concerned about your students having a computer that would have the ability for them to have like a microphone and a speaker, um, there, uh, go to meeting also gives you a phone number that students can call in using a phone number so they could just call in on their cell phone. And I'd like yeah. to chime in that I got dragged kicking and screaming to get a webcam by these two ladies, but um, I've used my <laughs> board Collaborate Ultra for years and have never used a webcam. These ladies actually made me get one and I think I purchased mine at Walmart for less than $10. So um, not only did they make me do it, but also I thought, well, with my students, when they come back from spring break, I, you know, when I conduct my classes, I do plan on showing my face probably at the beginning, at the end, just so that they see a familiar face. And I'm hoping that we know they're going to be stressed out, right? So I think hopefully it will provide them a little bit of comfort to see that, oh, you know, I'm still alive and it's not just some talking voice. So as much as I don't like the webcam, then I've given in. So. And, you know, I might okay. also point out that, um, you know, I've seen a couple of people have asked about WebEx and WebEx works exactly the same way as GoToMeeting and as Zoom. So all of the features that we've talked about with Zoom and GoToMeeting works exactly the same with WebEx. So we just didn't mm -hmm. choose to highlight that because that's not something that the three of us have used. But you, if your school provides you with WebEx, as opposed to GoToMeeting, works exactly the same. Yes, I have used WebEx, but our school discontinued it last fall when we got Teams. So WebEx does work the same. Um, we have a question. I'm going to take this one. Can students share their screen with Zoom or just me? You both can share it. You both can share whoever wants to share. Um, OK. Um, Zoom does not have a breakout room. Uh, oh, if your school provides Zoom Pro, I guess, um, yeah, if you have breakout rooms available to you for your Zoom account, that would work exactly the same way. Okay. Um, okay. So, in Collaborate, do you know if you can create a pre recorded lecture in one course section and copy it over to another course section? I'd like to do practice runs on practice site and then copy them over to my actual site. Okay, so Ruthann, um, I would ask, I would invite you to come to our video webinar because there's a lot better tools than using Collaborate. Um, you can use Collaborate just like you can use Excel as a word processor, but there's going to be a lot better tools expressly for that that have ways that make it much easier for you so you could be able to like re-record just this one slide instead of the whole thing. Collaborate's really built for synchronous um, delivery, so either synchronous office hours or synchronous class where you have students participating. If you're going to record, I would say definitely come to our webinar on um, Wednesday about how to record live because there's a lot of very good free options available, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and I should mention also that um, for our webinars that we're giving this week and next week, um, if you aren't able to come, go ahead and sign up because we're sending recordings out to everyone um, after the um, webinar so that everyone, even if you didn't able to come, you'll get a copy of the recording. Yeah, and the registration links for the Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday webinars this week, the video conferencing and other ones, will go up within a couple hours of us finishing here. Um, I have another question. My school has blue jeans for video conferencing. Yes, it's absolutely comparable to, say, Collaborate Ultra or some of the other tools that uh, we just have not um, done that. We didn't pick that. It's one of the ones we're doing, but I am familiar with it. Okay. So what other questions? Do we have any other questions? Yeah, we had a, um, this is another, this is a plug for one of our later um, webinars this week, but um, Teresa asks, once you're in Zoom or any of the other systems, can you write out problems to show examples? And so absolutely, that's how I do it. So I use GoToMeeting. Um, I have a Surface Pro laptop and I write out um, 
on my screen and my students see what I'm writing out on the screen. Um, so you just share your screen and then it shows everything that you're doing on your screen. Um, but we're going to do later this week, um, we're gonna, I think it's on Friday, Wendy, we're gonna Friday. do mm -hmm. um, how to, the different um, t um, tools that are out there that will enable you to write on your screen and, ha and how to accomplish that. Yeah, and not everyone has a Surface tablet, um, so we're going to talk about options that we do when we don't have our Surface available or if we don't have a Surface. So I think that Friday one will be really neat, especially for those colleagues that teach accounting and need to work out problems. So there's some really cool tools we're going to be talking about. Um, we're going to talk about at least one iPad app that makes it really easy to create uh, videos writing them out. So there's our plug. Any other questions you see there, Tracy? Yeah, I'm just looking through and just um, um, looking to see how, if there's anything that we haven't talked about. Feel um, free to share our materials with your colleagues. That's absolutely fine. When you get the email from us, that's fine. Um, and we will, we will be emailing either tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, just depends when we get that email out. Yeah, you know, Wendy so. and Jennifer, um, Ruth Ann asked on here if you have any advice for remote online testing. And I know you guys did last Thursday, you did a webinar on remote testing, and that's posted on our blog, accountingisanalytics.com. Mm -hmm. It's also on LinkedIn. So we've tried to put these places that you could find them. So, and you can also reach out to us and we can send you the links for those things. But we did do a webinar giving lots of tips for how you can give exams online if you don't perhaps have a proctoring solution provided by your school. Or even if you do, maybe that proctoring solution isn't what you want. So I think that might be the end of our questions. We're happy to take questions. If you email us, you can reach us through accountingisanalytics.com. All of our emails are on the website. And we thank you for joining us. And we will um, hopefully see you at webinars later this week. Great. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.